This week on Bearcat Update, we highlight the Northwest women's tennis team senior athletes. Northwest baseball and softball teams were back in action. And the Northwest golf team is gearing up for the Central Region Preview. Watch Bearcat Update Monday through Thursday at 6.15 on KNWT Channel 8. <laughs> Bearcat Update is sponsored by St. Francis Hospital and Health Services. Good evening and welcome into another edition of Bearcat Update. I'm Chris Roush. We begin tonight's show with the Bearcat women's tennis team. This week we highlight two seniors on the squad. Camila Casada is a senior from Costa Rica. In 2012, she was named second team All-MIAA. In 2013, she finished with an 18-9 overall singles record and reached as high as number three in the regional rankings. Stephanie Mannix is also a senior and she's from Lincoln, Nebraska. In 2012, she was named first team all MIAA. In 2014, she earned MIAA academic honors and compiled a team best 16-9 doubles record. Reporter Angela Luna sat down with one of the seniors, Stephanie Mannix. Stephanie Mannix, a senior from Nebraska, tells us her favorite moments on the team and what it takes to be a Bearcat tennis player. My most memorable moment was my sophomore year and we were tied 4-4, we were playing in Poria State, and you play nine matches, so you play whoever gets the five, so we were tied 4-4, and I was the last match, and I was playing the third set, and I was down 2-5, and you played a six, and I came back and I won 7-5, so then we won as a team 5-4, and then the team rushed the court, and it was really exciting. During season, it's different than off season, but off season, we lifts probably, like two or three days a week for about an hour and then condition for like half an hour every other day, sometimes every day, and then practice for an hour and a half every day. During season, we just practice for an hour and a half. And then when we have matches, we obviously play matches, which lasts anywhere from four to five hours. And then we have off days. I'd say that it's a full-time job. You have to realize that you're not going to have a lot of free time between school and tennis if you want to give it all that you have and so just go into that knowing that and you have to love it because you're going to be spending so much time doing it. Reporting for Bearcat Update, this is Angela Luna. Thanks Angela. Now Morgan Jones is down with Camila Casada. Senior tennis player Camila Casada has been playing tennis since she was seven years old. Her family influenced her by putting her in several camps. One summer um, she just decided that it would be a, like a fun thing for me to do um, so he like we had like summer camps and he just like signed me in and, and that's how I started actually. Recently receiving the MIAA Athlete of the Week award left Camilla surprised but also honored. It's actually a pretty good like I never had like I've never received that award before so um, when my coach told me that I got it uh, I was very excited and impressed I was surprised that I got it, but it was, it was, it was like a, a privilege. Many difficulties are faced in preparation for a tennis match. Playing in the number one position, you're under a lot of pressure. I think um, just like uh, being anxious and nervous, I think those are like the big things. Satisfied with how she completed her season, Camilla wasn't quite sure about the outcome. I actually am. I wasn't expecting doing this good, um, but I'm very satisfied with um, the teamwork that we, that we have accomplished as a team and I'm satisfied by my individual work and, and what I can um, bring into the team. Camilla plans to continue tennis after she graduates. I might give some lessons and still enjoy it because I love it. I, I don't imagine my life without, without tennis. I am Morgan Jones reporting for Bearcat Update. Thanks, Morgan. And when we come back on Bearcat Update, Northwest baseball team and softball teams were in action, and the Northwest golf team is gearing up for the Central Region Preview. Stay tuned.
Bearcat Update is sponsored by St. Francis Hospital and Health Services. Welcome back to Bearcat Update. With the Northwest women's golf season winding down, the team is looking to have a strong performance in this week's Central Region Preview. Bearcat Update reporter Taylor Carter caught up with head coach Andy Peterson. The top two or three teams in the league, Central Oklahoma, Northeastern State, um, and probably Lindenwood, they're in a, you know, they're in a tier by themselves. They, they score you know, right around 300 all the time, you know, and whereas we're in the 330s, 320s, somewhere in there. So those three teams are kind of in the next tier is the word I keep using. They're in the, they're in the next level of the NIAA, okay? That's, that's where we want to get three, four, five years from now. Um, but, you know, right now our competition is, you know, the Missouri Westerns, Fort Hayes, the Kearneys, uh, Central Missouri, um, those other schools that are right there with us that are all going to be fighting for that third and fourth spot in the conference. So those are going to be the teams that we're really battling. Um, down there at conference. Thanks, Taylor. The Northwest softball team traveled to Pittsburgh, Kansas to take on the Gorillas this past weekend. On Friday, the Cats split the doubleheader with Pittsburgh State, losing Game 1 8-7 and Game 2 winning it 11-1. And on Saturday, Northwest traveled to Joplin, Missouri to take on the Lions. The Bearcats swept Missouri Southern by winning Game 1 9-2 and winning Game 2 5-0. The Bearcats now sit at 19-19 overall and 12-8 in the MIAA. And the Bearcat baseball team was back in action also this past weekend at Emporia State, though. On Friday, the Bearcats came on the losing end as they lost 5-4. But on Saturday, the Cats split the doubleheader with the Hornets, winning Game 1 8-6 and losing Game 2 11-6. But on Sunday, Northwest would fall to Emporia State 10-9. The Bearcats now sit at 19-20 overall and 14-14 in the MIAA. And we come back here on Bearcat Update. Coming off a World Series appearance, the Kansas City Royals are starting where they left off. Stay tuned. Bearcat Update is sponsored by St. Francis Hospital and Health Services. Welcome back into Bearcat Update, and we reached the final segment of tonight's show. And of course, it's crunch time, and it revolves around the defending AL champion Royals. In 2006, Dayton Moore was hired as the new general manager of the Kansas City Royals, and at that point in the Royals franchise, there was little to be optimistic about. With each year came a promise of change and a brighter future. Outside of the lone 2003 season, the Royals had not been above 500 for years. However, with the hiring of Moore came optimism of a brighter future. But there was a catch. It would take a few years to come to fruition. Through the first couple of years of Moore's tenure, the Royals had a Cy Young pitcher on the staff in Zach Greinke. But all good things must come to an end, and Greinke was traded to Milwaukee for players that would become focal points of the World Series run, Alcides Escobar and Lorenzo Cain. Another player from that trade was Jake Odorizzi, and he ended up being traded to Tampa Bay with Will Myers for James Shields and Wade Davis in 2011. Fast forward four years later and the Royals have been in the World Series and have been a main talking point throughout the league so far this season. And coming into this season, the Royals had a lot of question marks with the loss of Billy Butler, who was signed by the Oakland Athletics for a three-year $30 million deal in the offseason. And the Royals had to make up for the loss of him at the designated hitter spot. They would go out and sign Kendrys Morales to fill that role, as well as Nori Aoki in right field. He would also lead the team in free agency and they would sign Alexis Rios, who would come in. And so far, both of those guys have made huge impacts for this team. With a team like guys like Salvador Perez, Eric Hosmer, and Mike Moustak as the focal points of the offense, as well as the defense, a lot of things are riding on the Kansas City Royals coming into this year. The needs of Salvador Perez's offense to improve from what he did in October last year, swinging at everything around three feet around the plate. And now he's already got a couple home runs and leading the Royals in home runs so far in this early season, as well as his gold glove defense behind the plate, already gunning down a couple of players trying to steal on him. 
Mike Moustakis last year was a focal point as he was sent down to AAA Omaha because the Royals did not know if he was going to be their everyday third baseman moving forward. But in the September and October of last year, Moustakis came on strong, hitting five home runs in the postseason and proving that he was a part of the Royals' future for years to come. So far this season, Moustakis, his average hasn't been great. He's been starting to pop up a little bit more, but he's also made contributions that he did not make early in the season last year. For Eric Hosmer, this was supposed to be his breakout year as he went to arbitration this past offseason, and the key focal point was how much is Eric Hosmer going to be paid. Well, the Royals decided to settle with Eric Hosmer and his agent, but Hosmer has a lot to prove this year because he wants that big-time deal that bigger markets can offer, but the Kansas City Royals may not be able to, but the Royals and Hosmer would love to stay together. Eric Hosmer has been able to perform pretty well so far on the offensive side of the ball. His defense is a huge factor at first base as he's able to scoop out anything coming into the dirt from throwers from around the infield. Another question mark for the Royals coming into this season was the starting rotation. They knew Jordano Ventura and Danny Duffy and Jeremy Guthrie was going to be there, but they did not know who was going to replace James Shields. That came in with Edison Volquez. He was signed in the offseason, and Jason Vargas was also already here, but nobody knew who would actually come in and be that number one thrower. So far this season, and it's been Jordano Ventura, although he's left both of his stars with cramps in his thumb as well as his right calf, but so far these Royals, the pitching staff has been phenomenal through the first couple of games of the season. And moving to their bullpen, it's been lights out so far this year, just like it was last year when you had Holland, Davis, and Herrera in the back end of the pin. They have a lot of long relievers that are able to come in in the crunch time as well. So this Royals team so far, they're leaving right where they left off last year with their World Series run, and who knows? They had to get through Detroit, though, in the American League Central, as well as Cleveland and Chicago, but it should be a fun year. And that'll do for Bearcat Update this week. Remember to follow us on Twitter at Bearcat Update 8 and like us on Facebook at Bearcat Update. Have a good night.